The developers of Dark and Darker have just released the statistics for Playtest 4. There's a lot of information in here, some of it more useful than others. Undoubtedly, players will want to know what the stats mean for their favorite class, and what the stats reveal in terms of balancing concerns. I'm going to go through a bunch of the more useful statistics and see what we can glean from them. First, let's establish a baseline. Here we have our game count by class, which tells us how many times each class was played. This is not how many characters were created, but how many times a class was used to enter a game. Or, at the very least, that's what it should be, if it were labeled properly. I'm about 80% of the way producing this analysis, and I just learned that this graph is identical to the character's created graph. So I've taken some data that we'll be using later in the analysis to create this. Ta-da! It's not too different from characters created, but it's enough of a difference to matter for our comparisons. Now, we have a baseline, a measure of how much each class was played, as well as how many kills each class contributed. This value is useful to start with, as we can compare it with other values to see if classes perform proportionally to their usage. First, let's compare it to these stats here. Here, we can get our first metric of success. It's not entirely clear whether sell count is referring to the gold value of the items you sell, or simply the number of items sold, but either way, it's a pretty decent metric for success. After all, in order to sell items, you need to extract with them, and the more items you extract with, the more you successfully looted enemies or other players. What about craft count? Mining ores requires a steady source of income to afford pickaxes, as well as being able to successfully mine, defend yourself, and extract. Surely it could be a useful metric. Unfortunately, mining has a skew to it, as mining speed is tied to your interaction speed. We can see that the classes with higher interaction speed have higher craft counts, and classes with lower interaction speed have lower craft counts. This interaction speed bias is not present in the cell count, and so using cell count is a much better metric. So what can we glean from cell count? Here, we can compare the percentage of cell count directly to the percentage of games played, and get a decent idea of a class's general success, that is, ability to loot and extract across all games. Both of these stats include all games, whether it's high roller, goblin caves, or normal. For example, let's look at fighter. Fighter accounts for 18.39% of all games, yet 23.18% of all selling. We could say that Fighter is doing very well for themselves. Now let's look at Wizard. Wizard accounts for 14% of games played, yet 7% of items sold. This is an extreme difference in results, much more significant a difference than any other class. And here's a quick comparison of the rest of the classes. We see here that Fighter, Ranger, and Barbarian all perform better than we'd expect, while Cleric, Rogue, and especially Wizard all perform worse than expected. Let's do a bit more exploring. So far we've only looked at cell count, but what about PvP? Back on our first page, we see another metric, the total kills. Here we can get a similar understanding of how well a class is doing, at least in terms of PvP. PvP is important, as it's undoubtedly one of the most dangerous things you'll run into in a dungeon. We can see here that Fighter, Barbarian, and Ranger have positive ratios of kills to games while Rogue once again has a slight decline, and Wizard is performing horribly. Cleric is also doing poorly, but that's understandable, as clerics are more likely to be buffing the people doing the killing, not doing any killing themselves. Now, isn't something a bit odd about this? Almost all the discourse regarding class strength right now is about Wizard and Barbarian being too powerful in PvP, and yet Wizard has absolutely horrible performance. Well, let's look at another bit of data and see what we can learn. Specifically, let's look at High Roller. The high roller leaderboards are useful in terms of showing the known potential of a class, that is, what they are capable of at the current highest skill levels with the best gear. If someone is able to reach the top 200, they are rich enough to consistently pay the entry fee and have the skill and gear to consistently perform better than the vast majority of players. Here we see some extremely significant number differences, compared to the stats from earlier. We see that Barbarian, Wizard, and Ranger account for over 80% of the representation in the top 200 leaderboards. This paints a pretty clear picture. These are the classes that are strongest right now, when used with good gear and high skill. This makes sense, if we go based on the current discourse of Wizard and Barbarian are overpowered, but the inclusion of Ranger is a bit out of left field. Barely anyone talks about Ranger, and yet they have nearly as much representation as Wizard and Barb. Now let's look at the rest of the High Roller leaderboard. Here, we see Ranger dominating every metric by a wide margin. The only metric where another class comes close is the Escape Artist leaderboard, where Wizard is a close second, with Barb running up on a close third. This is not dissimilar to the PvP leaderboard, where those three classes made up 80% of all slots. In the case of Escape Artist, these three make up 60% instead. 50% of the available classes making up 60% of the leaderboard is still significant, but not as significant as 80%. Interestingly, Cleric performs very well on the Escape Artist leaderboard, being tied with Barbarian. This is our only real data point when it comes to high-level Cleric, as chances are, they're escaping with their teammates, and their teammates are the ones dealing with other players. Ranger is not at the top of the PvP leaderboard, sitting at a close third. In terms of killers, Barbarian has 56 players, Wizard has 55, and Ranger has 50. 
The fourth place class is Fighter, at a measly 21. This is a massive jump from third to fourth, and may point to a balanced discrepancy between these three classes, at least in the top 200 players. But of course, this data isn't very detailed. It simply tells us how many of each class is in the top 200, not what the performance of each class is. For example, a top 10 Barbarian may have over a thousand kills, but another Barbarian who places in 150th may only have 100 kills. Both of these Barbarians represent one point in this data, but they're not equal at all in terms of performance. Thankfully, Iron Mace have provided a spreadsheet with every player, class, and score in the top 200. We could use this to further break down the top 200 PvP kills. Now this is certainly a lot to take in. Here, we can use a similar process to the one we used earlier, comparing the number of players with their performance. For example, we see that Wizard accounts for 27% of all top 200 players, but 29.47% of all kills. As we limit the dataset to higher and higher ranked players, we see similar trends across all of them. Barbarian always accounts for the highest number of kills, Wizard is always second by a small but not insignificant amount, and Ranger is always in third, significantly lower than Wizard, yet significantly higher than every other class. Another interesting bit about this dataset is just how top-heavy it is. Look at this. Here we see the top two Barbarians accounting for over 5,000 kills. The total kills across all Barbarians in the top 200 is about 20,000. This means that two players are pulling 25% of the weight. It's entirely possible that these two Barbarians are heavily skewing our statistics. However, when I adjusted their kill numbers to be less extreme but still higher than 3rd and 4th place, not much changed. Barbarian and Wizard were still close in performance, only in this scenario, Wizard was the one slightly edging out Barbarian, not the other way around. Either way, the data follows similar trends. Wizard and Barbarian are both overperforming compared to the number of their players, and that overperformance only grows more significant the higher the rank we limit ourselves to. Ranger is prevalent, but not nearly as extreme as the other two classes. The remaining three classes are represented less and less as we climb up the ranks, once again supporting our hypothesis that there's a distinct power gap between each group of three classes. But what if we wanted to get a bigger picture? What if we wanted to know how each class performed in High Roller overall, rather than just in the top 200? The top 200 is a good metric for the absolute richest and highest skilled players, but it doesn't give us a good metric for how the classes perform on average in High Roller. Thankfully, Iron Mace provided us with the numbers we need to determine this. They just didn't put it in a chart or give percentages or anything. Here, we can see the play, kill, and down count for each class, divided by lobby type, Goblin Caves, High Roller, and Normal. From this, we can actually make our own graphs. Here, I've put the data into some useful tables and charts. Here we can see the classes in order of amount played, in number of kills, and what the ratio of kills to games was. Immediately, we see a much more even spread of games played between classes, although Wizard is still significantly lower in terms of pick rate. However, they fare much better in the kills category. Uh, kind of. They're only fifth in total kills, but that's not what's important. Looking at the ratio, they have a score of 1.3, much better than the ratio of 0.5 on the total kills chart from earlier. But still, they're only slightly better than Fighter here. The classes with the real staggering numbers are Barbarian and Ranger, each of them much higher than the other four classes. We can gleam a few interesting things from the data so far. The most interesting thing we've encountered is the discrepancy between Wizards' perceived power and their actual performance. They're doing great in the top 200, but not significantly better than Barbarian and Ranger. And in the totality of High Roller, they're only decent, only barely outperforming Fighter and Rogue. Of course, this isn't the only data that Iron Mace provided. There's also the Normal Lobbies and the Goblin Lobbies to look at. First, we have Normal Lobbies. Here, things are just a little different. The first thing you might notice is the sheer volume of games and kills, compared to High Roller. High Roller barely broke 75,000 games for its most played class, and yet here we're looking at almost 4 million games for Fighter. This data is far more indicative of the average performance for each class. This data is pretty interesting and matches many of the things we've seen so far. Earlier, we saw that Wizard has about a 0.5 kill to game ratio in total, and so it's unsurprising to see them drop down from 1.3 to 0.66. Barbarian is still top of the game in terms of player killing. Ranger once again places in our top three, same as every metric we've seen so far. And here, we can see Fighter performing significantly better than in High Roller. Now, we could call it here and start thinking about what this data means, but it's important to look at the third part of our data, the Goblin Caves. Goblin Caves gives us a decent idea of how classes do in a solo environment. Or maybe it doesn't. It's hard to say. In my experience, many players I encountered in the Goblin Caves were brand new to the game, or running completely default gear. So we could say it gives us an idea of how the classes do in the hands of a new player. It's hard to pull any real meaning from the Goblin Caves data, but it's still important to at least check it out, just to get the full picture. And... see what I mean? Every class here is performing horribly. Everyone is at less than one kill per game, with Wizard at a pitiful 0.17. Fighter is doing the best, even above Barbarian. This data is fun to look at, but it doesn't really tell us much that we don't already know. Maybe 
something we could say is that Wizard does significantly worse when solo, or maybe they do significantly worse with default gear. Either way, it's things you probably could say just from experience or from the other data. Of course, much of it could be explained by the caves just being a more difficult PvE experience, or players being more likely to team up with random players they encounter. It's certainly interesting to think about, but it's hard to say how useful this data is. And just for the sake of it, I've combined the data from Normal and High Roller to give us an idea of how things are outside the caves. The data here is near identical to the normal lobby data, especially the ratios. What this really tells us is just how tiny of a minority the high roller and top 200 players are. The data they contribute to the whole is insignificant to the point where it does not impact the total ratio of kills to games. This is useful information to have if we want to think about class balance, and whether or not things that are problems at the top percentage of players are impactful to the rest of the game. So that's about it, at least in terms of the most useful data we have. Now let's think about what the data tells us. The least complicated class so far is Rogue. Rogue has a pretty consistent ratio of kills to games, but their cell count is somewhat below average. It is worth noting that their kill to game ratio drops when entering High Roller, and they're in dead last for escapes in the top 200, but that can be understood. Rogues are likely to be solo, and the teams that enter High Roller are likely to be more coordinated. Additionally, Rogue has poor magic resist, and we saw that Wizard is more common and performs better in High Roller than they do in normal lobbies. High level Wizards are more likely to understand how to counterplay Rogue, and have the tools to do so. So Rogue's lackluster performance outside of High Roller, and worse performance while in High Roller, both make a lot of sense. Up next is Cleric. Cleric's cell count situation is similar to Rogue, but their situation is slightly better. However, they do poorly in the player kills metrics no matter where we look, but that's to be expected, as Cleric is expected to be buffing and healing, not fighting themselves. Cleric is a good example of how looking purely at the data doesn't tell us how impactful a class is on the health of the game. Cleric may not be overperforming in any department, but it's very likely that Cleric is buffing other classes and causing them to overperform. We can see a nugget of truth here if we look at the high roller leaderboards again. Cleric is second place for Treasure Collector, and tied for third in Escapes. This gives us reason to believe that Cleric is very common in successful high level team compositions, and gives us reason to suspect that their buffs may play a part in the overperformance of other classes. Now let's think about Fighter. Fighter does extremely well in the general metrics, having a significantly high cell count and a great kill to game ratio in normal lobbies. Yet Fighter drops off significantly in High Roller. The factor most likely contributing to this is that Fighter serves a similar team role as Barbarian, being a slower, tankier, melee-oriented class. But when it comes to stacking extreme amounts of melee damage and abusing buffs, Barbarian simply does a better job. It makes sense for teams to bring Barbarians over Fighters, if the idea is to buff the melee class to give them high move speed and damage. It's very likely that if Barbarian were to be made less powerful, Fighter could wind up replacing them in the same role. Next, Barbarian. Barbarian's stats are simple. Good pick rate, good sell rate, significantly high kill rate. This kill rate only gets more extreme the higher you go. From normal to high roller, the jump is significant, and in the top 200, they're the most represented class for PvP kills. There's a few reasons for this that you might already know if you're involved in the game, but the short version is that it's extremely powerful to stack loads of flat damage onto a Barbarian, and then buff their move speed so they can circumvent their usual weaknesses. The root of the problem is the sheer amount of damage you can stack on classes, but Barb in particular is very good at exploiting that damage, especially if a team is backing them up. There's no doubt here that Barbarian is the most effective PvP class, which is a significant department to be good in. Other players are arguably the most dangerous thing you'll encounter in the game, and also the most lucrative when it comes to defeating them and taking their loot. There's a pretty solid argument here to say that Barbarian is the best class in the game. Now for Ranger. Ranger stats are also very simple. Ranger is consistently strong and also well-rounded. They do well in PvP, always placing in the top three of our metrics, they have a good cell count, and in High Roller, they dominate every leaderboard, except PvP, where they are a step below Barb and Wizard, but a step above the rest of the classes. This points to a class that is not only more effective than average in PvP, but also effective in general when it comes to PvE, bossing, and just plain surviving. If you were to ask which class is the best as a generalist, then this data would tell you that it's Ranger. The performance is exceptionally good, yet not many players talk about them probably because they're not as extreme as Barbarian and Wizard. If those more extreme classes were to be toned down, it's likely that Ranger would become the absolute best class. So that leaves us with Wizard. I've saved Wizard for last because, well, what the data says about Wizard is extremely interesting and probably also very controversial. I mentioned earlier that there seems to be a discrepancy between Wizard's perceived power and their actual power. Wizard is seen by a lot of players as the strongest, most overpowered class in the entire game, with many a complaint, and the developers seem to agree, as Wizard has been the target of many nerfs recently. And yet, the data says otherwise. Wizard has the lowest pick rate, which by itself is not necessarily indicative of power, it at least tells us that the class is unwelcoming. Whether it's the obtuse spell system, the lackluster starting gear, the skill and positional awareness required to survive encounters relative to other classes, 
people don't enjoy playing this class. What may be more indicative of power is the rest of the stats. Wizard's pick rate is 14%, while their cell count is 7%. This is the most significant discrepancy between pick rate and cell count in any class, and this is a negative performance discrepancy. Of course, the thing most people point to when it comes to Wizard is their extreme PvP capability, but that's not even really supported by the data either. In non-Goblin Cave games, Wizard is the only non-cleric class to dip below a 1 in the kill-to-game ratio. In High Roller, they bump up to a 1.3, but they're still not performing significantly better than Rogue or Fighter, and they're no nowhere near as high as Ranger and Barbarian. To say that Wizards dominate High Roller is completely inaccurate here. The only metric where Wizard performs extremely well is in the top 200 PvP leaderboards, where they place... second. Them, Ranger, and Barbarian are all kinda lumped together here. Ranger does worse than the other two, but is still notably powerful. But the difference between Wizard and these classes is that Wizard's strength does not apply as you go further down the metrics. Barbarian and Ranger keep their strong performance in all other metrics at all other skill levels. Pick rate, kills to games, cell count, high roller. These classes are consistently powerful. Barbarian is always at the top of the kill ratio, and Ranger is always in the top three, regardless of what metric we look at. Wizard is only significantly powerful in the top two of a player base that is so small that its results do not affect the total ratios at all. Of course, I'm not going to ignore the buffing problem. Haste and Ignite are some of the strongest buffs in the game, and Wizard, like Cleric, is probably contributing to the overperformance of Barbarian, but that's a separate issue from Wizard's own individual capabilities as a class. People talk about their damage stacking and PvP prowess, yet this prowess only really shows its head in top 200. Why? Is it that they require extremely expensive gear to get the same results as other classes? Is it their glass cannon nature where one mistake spells death due to their fragility? There's plenty of reasons I could potentially list, but regardless of the specifics, the stats paint the following picture. Wizard is the least popular and least successful class across almost every level of the game. In the right hands, and with high-end gear, they can do extremely well, about as well as the two most generally powerful classes in the game. But that potential only exists for a fraction of a fraction of the player base. For those in High Roller, Wizard is only average, and for everyone else, the class is terrible. Somehow, Wizard is simultaneously the worst class and the best class in the game. This is a problem that no other class has. Everyone else's metrics are consistent, and so this raises the question, is something wrong with Wizard? Wizard's highs aren't any higher than Barbarian's, yet those highs demand much more skill with much higher risk, and Wizard's lows and averages are far worse than everyone else's. Clearly something is amiss here, and personally, I don't think it's their highs. There's certainly some unhealthy aspects of their design in terms of some things being too good, but I think it's even more unhealthy for there to be such a drastic difference between their average performance and their maximum performance, and I think it's a bit misguided to be focusing on nerfing a class that only performs well in such a tiny minority of games, as opposed to classes that perform consistently in every metric. That's about the most logical conclusion we can draw from this data, in terms of class balance. Barbarian and Ranger overperform, and they do so consistently. Wizard underperforms in the vast majority of cases, but when used by the absolute top percentage of players, Wizard performs about as well as Barbarian. Of course, this data doesn't include everything. It doesn't tell us how many players were killed while using what buffs, or what the most successful team compositions were. It doesn't tell us which players were solo and high roller. There's a lot of interesting possibilities to explain the data that we cannot confirm or deny without more information. For example, are Wizard and Barbarian overperforming at about the same rate in top 200 because the best teams are running them together? There's no way to know if that's true or false, but it is an interesting theory. And of course, there's no telling what the data might look like if players were given a month to play instead of just a week. Metas and strategies take time to develop, and there's only so much we can learn in such a limited time. Even considering that, a lot of these stats show consistent, significant differences between classes, and so it's still useful, and interesting, to explore that data.